for all the way to the far side. We'll go in alphabetical order with uh, Mr. Joe Belcher. Sir, two minutes to introduce yourself, please. Good evening. I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. Uh, I'm sorry, candidates. Yeah, you have to hold it because we are streaming and it is posted. So pass it. Pass the two. You'll Y'all start me over. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Joe Belcher. All right. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. It does sound a little bit better with this. Just tell you a little bit about myself very quickly. Uh, the things that are important to me in my life. I've been a Christian for 42 years. I moved, moved here 32 years ago from West Virginia. I was raised in the coal fields of West Virginia. Uh, my dad was a custodian in the school system. I promise you I know as much about the school system as anybody in this room because I cleaned enough of the floors and banged up the furniture with one of those rotary things and stoked the coal furnace when I was 10 years old. And so I, I grew up understanding what hard work was about. When I come to the state, and when I got married, I married uh, my first date. I've been married 37 years. I her for four years. I have a daughter that's 30, a son that's 27. I went in the uh, public school system here in West Virginia when we moved here 32 years ago. I've been with the uh, same company for 29 years, which is Clayton Inc. out of Knoxville, Tennessee. I was a vice president with them for seven years. Uh, I wrote their marketing training. I have uh, uh, extensive business experience. Uh, running up to 115 locations and almost a thousand employees. I am an extremely conservative person, I'm very traditional in my raising and uh, in my, uh, my beliefs and thoughts and I believe I want to be very inclusive in the county. I believe there's those out in the rural areas that need representation. I believe I'm qualified to do that. I think I'm also qualified to represent those that do not live in those rural areas and since my area goes from Sandy Mush all the way to Biltmore Forest, I would say that that would be important. And so I believe that I can, do, I can do that. I go to the school board meetings. You may see me at some commissioner's meetings. You see me around. I try to learn. I actually went to the forum last week over Black Mountain and uh, I'm a marketing guy. I won't ask you if you've seen my signs because you might hurt my feelings if, if, if you haven't. But I would be honored with your support and I uh, thank you for your attendance this evening. Thank you. Mr. David King. I'd like to thank the uh, league for having this this evening and everyone for coming out. Yes, I'm David King. I'm a native of Buncombe County. I've been here all my life. I'm a product of the Buncombe County school systems. Uh, I've also was a product of AB Tech and a product of Western Carolina University. I spent uh, 20 plus years working in manufacturing and uh, my wife and I also have had small businesses. We have a small retail business, a coffee business, and uh, a small real estate business. And at this time, I'm a farrier. I uh, went from a white collar job down to a very blue collar job. And uh, I enjoy doing that. It gets me out and talking with a lot of people. Uh, what I would like to bring, if elected, is balance to the commission. I think we, whoever's on the board, we need to work together. We need to ensure that we are good stewards of the county's money, that we uh, provide those services to the county that the people expect, and that uh, we're also mandated to uh, provide. And uh, I will be there to listen to uh, whoever has a, a need to express an opinion or a concern or do what I can to help. So thank you. And I too would like to start by thanking you all for being here and thanking the League of Women Voters for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, and I'd like to start with a little story about, about my family. I have a daughter who's 31 and a son who is 28. And we always knew that my son was going to have trouble in school. But that changed in third grade. And it changed because his third grade teacher diagnosed his autism. And, and she did it when scores of doctors and specialists just, just somehow missed it. So it was with gratitude that I started volunteering in the classroom and volunteering in other Buncombe County schools. And since then, I have uh, had the privilege of volunteering with a number of wonderful, wonderful nonprofits all over the county. I've worked with Children First, uh, with the Council on Aging, with Pisco Legal Services. So I've worked on um, I've worked on issues that deal with children, with families, with our senior citizen community, and with all of the folks in Buncombe County. I've been a worker bee. I've delivered meals for Meals on Wheels, 
and organized countless fundraisers. I've taken leadership roles, serving as a president of the board of Pisco Legal Services when they had a very successful uh, capital campaign in the middle of a uh, recession. And I've been an advocate working with uh, Children First and, the, and Women for Women, going to Raleigh trying to educate our legislators about issues facing Western North Carolinians. So when David Gant and um, Jane Wilden asked me to run for county commissioner, I was a little surprised, but, but I'm hoping that what they saw in me was someone who appreciates the opportunities they've been given and will champion those opportunities for everyone in Buncombe County. And thank you very much. All right, thank you. Ms. Michelle Peacewood. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here tonight. Uh, I was really looking forward to this forum. Uh, I think there's nothing like getting out there and talking to the people. The questions from the folks on the ground are the most important, and really that's what the commissioners need to listen to because that's what the problems are that they need to um, address. Uh, thank you to the league, and thank you to all the sponsors. Um, my name is Michelle Pace Wood. I'm running for commissioner as well. You'll be voting for two this year in your district. And a little bit about myself. I am a local, um, I grew up in the area, I graduated from Inca High School, class of 88. Um, I just love the mountains. The foot of Mount Pisgah was my playground. And we all had a good time uh, in the woods. So this area is near and dear to me. Um, I have a daughter, 13 year old, who currently attends Inca Middle School. Um, a wonderful, wonderful um, school and, and they've done some great things. And Candler is just my hometown, um, and I've worked in that area a long time. I'm a business owner, um, I'm a real estate agent. I do have a degree in geospatial technology from Haywood, and that's under the forestry department, as well as three certifications. So I like to go to school, and I, and I like to learn about the woods and, uh, and, of course, the computer background. I was appointed uh, by the commissioners to serve on the Board of Adjustments for Buncombe County, and I am a current member of the planning board. I've served three years. I also have the honor of serving um, for Pisgah Elementary on the School Advisory Council when my daughter was there, and I found that a wonderful experience. Um, a little bit of volunteer work, uh, Destination Imagination and Odyssey of the Mind were great programs that my daughter was involved in. When I was young, I was on the track team and my husband was a baseball player so when we have kids we thought oh this is going to be great we're going to have bad baseball games or basketball games or what are we going to do my daughter was uh, more of an artist she was a writer uh, she found the creative uh, arts were where she wanted to be so that's that's where I, I went to so i would appreciate you supporting me this time and i'm going to work hard for jobs and schools right. and veterans thank, thank you, you. Forgot to do this before. Somebody left a book. It was brought up to me. They left a book. If this is yours, I'm going to put it on that table right there in just a moment so you can go ahead and get it. Also, I want to remind you, if you have a question and you need a card to write it on, hold your hand up. We will bring you a card. And then once you are done with the question, thank you. once you are done with the question, hold the card up and we will come and pick it up and it will be brought to me. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And we'll start with you, Mr. Belcher, first. What is the biggest issue facing the county, and how would you address it? My concern, uh, <laughs> thank you, David. <laughs> Being raised in, a, in an area where we did not have a lot, I was very concerned. I was not used to seeing debt um, as we were as I was raised we did not incur debt we paid for what we needed and if we did not need it we waited so I'm concerned about the amount of debt that's been added over the years uh, over the last four or five years and what I would want to do would with my experience that I have, I deal with budgets, annual budgets, quarterly budgets, large budgets, and I would want to look at those line item by line item to, to determine and work with staff, great staff in this county, and work with them to try to help eliminate and reduce some of the ongoing debt that we have. You can have a, I appreciate 
And I'll stop. Yes, sir. Thank I'll you. follow the rules. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and ask the same question of you, Mr. King. <laughs> Uh, I consider the largest thing facing the county is jobs and economic opportunity. If we can bring back some of those jobs that we've had. I started out uh, close to 40 years ago working in the manufacturing sector. We had a lot of jobs here at that time and no uh, failing of the county, but they've, uh, jobs have a life cycle, particularly in the manufacturing sector. But we're seeing some movement to bring those jobs back. I want to continue that. I want to support the agencies that are there to bring them. I think that's the role of the commission is to be a support for uh, Chamber of Commerce and uh, the agencies that are involved with that. Thank you. Ms. Van Dyne. Well, obviously, um, jobs are a huge issue for Buncombe County as is funding for the schools. But I have to say, in my opinion, our biggest challenge will be dealing with the budget or the budget cuts that are that have already come from and continue to come from Raleigh. And I mention this because I think it's important for folks to understand. Yes, we lost stimulus money. Yes, we're in a bad economy. But the current state legislature made a choice. The governor asked for an extension of a three-quarter cent sales tax and they decided that our children were not worth that, and they voted to let that lapse rather, to, to, rather than to fund our schools. That's, um, I think our kids are worth that, that three quarter cent, and I'd like you to remember that when you go to the polls. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Um, I think jobs, and I think everyone is, is pretty aware, the jobs is the number one crisis that we have right now. People are, uh, suffering from uh, jobs loss because of technology. Um, there's no capital in the market for small business. Um, and the county can do things to help. Uh, I, I will dovetail on what Terry said, the state is gonna affect what we can do in this county. But we need to be actively looking at solutions that are gonna make small businesses be able to create jobs in this county. And we're gonna have to look at ways to attract those big employers by having affordable infrastructure and all of the resources they need to make this this county, Buncombe County, not Greenville, the number one pick for their, their new industry. Thank you. All right, we're gonna start with you, Mr. King, with this next question. Do you have any creative solutions to education funding that would keep class sizes teachable? What might you cut instead, management, sports, or something else? That's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> The uh, county basically provides, I think it's roughly $8 million a year and uh, to, to the uh, school system. The county is also mandated to provide the utilities and upkeep of the buildings and those things. Uh, I see the role of the commission is continuing to provide this funding to the school system. We, we have a duly elected school board that has much more insight into where to place those dollars and how to use those dollars than I think than the commissioners would. All right, thank you, sir. Ms. Van Dyne? Well, and I would have to echo what David just said. It is our responsibility provide, to provide um, a good education to our kids. And so, um, obviously, uh, we will work with the nonprofits in town, we'll work with um, uh, the businesses in town to leverage those dollars, but there's no way we abdicate that responsibility to others in our community. All right, thank you. Ms. Wood. Thank you. I think this is going to dovetail again on how the funding comes down from the state. Um, if the state funding to education cuts the budget to us, uh, we're going to have to make up the difference. That's that's how that's what's going to happen. And public education is important. It's an important part of infrastructure for business for the kids in Buncombe County. So I, I'm not sure how we'd have to cut uh, any kind of budget for education. I'm not a big fan of that. I know that they're, they're actually right now having to use very small desks in classrooms at Pisgah Elementary because they have too many kids in the classroom. So we've got problems right now just having kids fit in the room. So. And Mr. Belcher, please. There's a lot of great uh, charities in the area that work with the schools, angles, and tools for schools, and recently some of the things that you know, I was able to uh, 
attend some of those and, and I love when we come together as a community and try to help the school. As I said before, I try to go to the uh, school board meetings to watch and see how, how it works because when I was coming, when I was working with, uh, with Clayton, my wife was the one that went to the PTO meeting. She was the one that kept me, kept me engaged in all of that. Now she goes to the PTO meetings with her, with her grandson. And the class size is, is important. I'll say this, that my daughter is a, an assistant teacher at Johnson Elementary. Uh, she has a heart for children. Um, she's an assistant teacher at kindergarten. And I have the opportunity to go from time to time to her class. And I, I have the opportunity to mentor children uh, in our church. And it's important to me to see our children improve, the reading skills improve, and to work with education and the community to help improve that throughout the county. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, at least two of you mentioned charities and nonprofits. So this next question will begin with you, Ms. Van Dyne. And the question is, do you approve of the county giving money to nonprofits? Um, great question. And yes, I absolutely approve of that. And I'll give you a great example. Um, we do not make charitable contributions from the county to nonprofits. What we do is we partner with nonprofits. Uh, an example is uh, Mountain Housing Opportunities is getting ready to build a project in um, the Eagle Street uh, Market area, and they will take our contribution and they will leverage that with federal contributions and contributions from local people. They'll create not just jobs here building those, but they'll create workforce housing so that someone in Barnardsville can go to school, get an education at AB Tech, get a job at the hospital, and free up um, uh, the waiting list for a procedure for someone in Leicester. That's, that's, that's not charity, that's investment. And I fully support it. Ms. Um, Wood? I think that it's important anyone who partners with a county, whether it's a nonprofit or a contractor, that there's accountability and that you understand exactly you know their responsibilities what you expect of them and, and so I'm not necessarily against nonprofits or for nonprofits or I just want to make sure anyone that we partner with is going to provide the services at the most reasonable cost and make sure that we're taking care of taxpayer dollars and that they're going to actually be able to prove to us by contract that they can you know fulfill their obligations Thank you, Mr. Belcher. Well, so echo what Miss Wood said. You you cannot you cannot give money to anyone unless there's accountability. I taught my son when he was about ten years old. He used to come and ask me for everything. I said, "If you got to tell you now, if if the if you got to know now, the answer is no. But if you give me an opportunity to think about it, wait on it, gather the proper information, then there's a possibility. I think there's duplication of nonprofits. We have great nonprofits in this area." Salvation Army Boys and Girls Clubs. Um, we have the, the, the Reverend Woods at the uh, Western Carolina Mission that does just a wonderful job. And I think some of these larger nonprofits could do the work of some nonprofits that we have given money to. And I think we have to be very careful with the county's money. And it's not about our heart, it's about not putting debt and continually on our children and our grandchildren in the county. And we've, we've got to be able to support the ones that are already there and help them and hold them accountable. Thank you. Mr. King? Um, I also would like to echo what Michelle and uh, Joe said about accountability. But to carry on through with that, uh, the county has successfully partnered with some nonprofits. And I think that's key, those profits, nonprofits that provide services that the county would otherwise be providing. And there is a measurable savings where they have partnered with these nonprofits to provide these uh, services. So yes, I certainly support that uh, and would continue with that, but with the, uh, the oversight. Thank you. All right. Ms. Wood, we're gonna start with you on this next question. If elected, would you call on Congress to study and propose a constitutional amendment designed to reduce the influence of money in our political system? I believe it's a reference to Citizens United, but that would be my assumption. I don't want to put that on you. <laughs> I'll just read that. Would you call on Congress? We'll start with you. Would you call on Congress to study and propose a constitutional amendment designed 
to reduce the influence of money in our political system. Okay, I'm, I'm not, first of all, I'm not a fan of changing the Constitution just on any whim for a lot of reasons. So I'll, I'm going to say that that's not probably where I'm going to be. I think money and politics can be a problem. And um, I, I would like to see elections being funded by the folks that vote for them. And I think that's a true representation of the spirit of the electorate. So constitution changing is not where I like to go. I feel strongly that, about our constitution and support it. Um, but money in politics is a problem, so thank you. All right, Mr. Belcher. Changing the Constitution is not on the table, never would be in, in my lifetime. I mean, I'm, I'm taking too many, too many tests and memorizing too many things to, <laughs> for them to try to change it now. So, but um, I am offended by advertising. I don't want my children to see it. I don't want my six-year-old grandson to see it. Number one, in what we do, I can assure you the people that are sitting up here, are, um, <laughs> we don't invest a lot. There's not a lot of money that we have to spend in what we do in our race. And, and I know I only got 30 seconds, but the, uh, the breaking up into the districts gave us an opportunity to do this and to make it affordable for us to step out and, and, and lose sleep and disrupt our meals to be able to come out here and be with you guys. And that was a big deal to me. I would never have run and could not have afforded it if that had not happened. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. King? Um, I don't view that as a, a function of the county commission. Uh, Washington is not going to listen to the Buckingham County Commissioners. Um, so what I would do is focus on those issues that are pertinent to Buckingham County and move forward with those and, and try to, to solve problems that I can solve and work with the, the board. Thank you. And Ms. Van Dyke. Well, I would agree that it's probably not a function of the county commissioners, but personally, I have supported the amendment. Um, I believe it's not just a question of, of horrendous advertising, although we're all sick of that. Um, it's also a question of the influence that special interests have in our government at every level. I think it's very naive to think that uh, that people like myself would not be um, swayed by huge donations and huge support for my campaign. So I think as, in, as an individual, I definitely support. Uh, it, it, I think it's going to take a change to the Constitution to fix uh, the problem that we've gotten ourselves into. All right, thank you. Next question, we'll start with you, Mr. Belcher. I also want to uh, let the folks in the audience know, if you submit a question, if for some reason I do not get to it, please do not take it personally. I group them by, by issue and topic to the most related, and also we may eventually run out of time. So, But if you do have questions, if you need a card, hold your hand up, we'll get a card to you, and then once you've written the card in question, hold the card up and we'll pick it back up. All right, we'll start with you, Mr. Belcher. Uh, what is your position, or explain your position rather, on women's health issues? Well, I can only tell you that as it relates to myself. With uh, one year ago, I brought my mother from <coughs> West Virginia, and she's in the Aston Park. She has dementia. I was there with her today, trying to help her eat. She chatters just like she did when she was 20, and just like she did when she was my mother. I believe that um, you treat everybody with respect. You help everybody, whether it be the children with education, whether it be women and their rights, whether it be men, young men, whether you be from this area or not from this area, you have to have the proper servant's heart to be able to, to, to help everyone. I'm not really sure what that question entailed, but um, I was raised right to treat everybody with respect, so I'll say that. Mr. King. Also, a little confused about what exactly they're asking in the question, but uh, in terms of the county commission, and that's why I want to answer questions, is 
I, I'm not sure how that applies to the commission. Uh, you know, the commission is mandated to provide health services to the county, Medicaid, Medicare, and we certainly will do that. Uh, and I'll follow the law. Beyond that, I'm not sure exactly what what they're looking for in the question. Right, and, and I cannot expand any further on the on the intent of the question because that's all that was there. I would not put my assumptions on. Ms. Van Dyne? I, um, I believe a woman's uh, health choices are a matter for her and her physician and only her and her physician. Um, I am somewhat offended at least the national level that the subject of contraception is being somehow conflated with immorality. This is a health issue. Um, women died in droves from uh, childbirth uh, before um, we had modern medicine. I'm very grateful for modern medicine and, um, and this should be an issue completely between a woman and a doctor. All right, thank you, Ms. Wood. Um, I think a lot's been said already. I, I want to speak, because I only have one minute, in particular, when it does come to Buncombe County, one issue in particular that I want to speak to is that um, veterans are very dear to us. And in this district, we have a lot. We do not have a woman's veteran service officer in our county office. And a lot of them, one out of 14 veterans coming home is a woman. Uh, anticipated to be one out of eight. A lot of them are coming back and suffering from MST, uh, MST and PTSD. They just now opened a women's clinic, or getting ready to, at the VA. Uh, they've had, they didn't even have services. You had to go outside of the facility there to get women's regular doctor services to find a doctor to talk to. Uh, I think it's important that we recognize this group of women really needs Buncombe County's help. They need to uh, reintegrate into the uh, community and they're gonna have specific challenges that we can help uh, if we do get at least this one solution, uh, uh, a woman's uh, veteran specialist out in the county office. All right, thank you. <coughs> Mr. King, would you like a little more time? I'd love to All right, we'll go ahead and expand if any of you um, would like 30 seconds more. I, mean. I, I guess the point I'd like to make is County commissioners aren't lawmakers. They, they, they don't make laws. They have, they are charged with following the laws. And, and I don't think it's the place for county commissioners to be involved in people's, uh, you know, in the doctor's office with people. You know, that's not a, a point for county commissioners to take up. And I think uh, the best thing is commissioners just to do, follow the law, do what they're charged to do, and try to look after the citizens of Buncombe County the best they can. Would anybody care for 30 seconds? All right, Mr. King, we're going to start with this next question with you. What is your position regarding the Greenways uh, and support your position? And I believe part of that is would you put a bond referendum to voters to pay for the development of Greenways? Okay. Um, I am not seeing the master plan, so I can't tell you anything in detail about it. I'm not opposed to the Greenway. I personally like Greenways. So my wife and I visit the one in Abingdon, Virginia twice a year. Um, so I don't know what all this entails. The, the issue at hand would be the financing of it. And I'm not sure that uh, come next year is a good time to put that on the table, uh, that uh, bond referendum or any other bond <coughs> referendum. People are going to be faced with uh, their revaluation of their property. Uh, next year, so I think that may be a bit much to put on the county at that time. So, you know, I'm going to listen to what the uh, the citizens of Buncombe County say. I'm going to listen to everyone and uh, go from there. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir, Ms. Van Dyne. The Greenways plan is aspirational, and what I mean by that is it represents um, a vision of the county that in, that reflects our uh, the, the value we place on our natural resources. And so to that extent, I'm very, very supportive of the Greenways plan. However, um, now is not the time to divert funds from any other use for that plan, but it provides a framework for the long term 
for us to invest at some time in the future and to in fact accept dollars like we already have from private entities to develop and um, extend that plan further. Ms. Wood? Um, I went to several of the meetings. I went to one in Weaverville and one over in Inca when they were going around and showing the plan and I listened to a lot of people in the rooms. And, you know, I could kind of see maybe the one area that goes towards Bent Creek. I could kind of see the vision of maybe, uh, you know, a parkway in the future. But really for this particular issue is when it relates to parks, if you pull the county map up, the south and west, which is this district we're running in, are, are, don't have as many parks as, as the other areas. They just don't. And I think equal distribution of services is important. I think that doesn't happen always, especially in our district. Uh, the soccer park needs repair. Anyone who goes down there knows that. It's muddy every weekend. It's, it, there's some maintenance that needs to be done and I think some expansion of existing parks way before we talk about implementing a greenway plan. Thank you. Mr. Belcher. A few years ago, I went to the commissioner's meeting and presented a piece of property that is located in Candler and asked them uh, to explore the opportunity of maybe putting a small park there because we just did not have that out in that area and we needed some, we would like, if they had a piece of property that we already owned, I was trying to petition them to help. And um, I still think that that's the way, the way to do it. Right now, as far as the greenways, what I saw and the plan that I saw and I just saw on the surface was not a recreational area for children. Um, it was a place for to connect Buncombe from one side of the county to the other. I don't think at this time that that's the best thing for, for the county. And I don't think it meets the needs of the entire county. It meets the, the needs of the, of the south, of the north, the west, the east, I mean, the, excuse me, the east, the south, and the, uh, the, the southwest does not meet the entire uh, district that I'm in. It does not meet all their needs. And therefore, I would, I would not be for it at this time. Uh, I do like uh, the parks. I do like providing those areas for our children where they can play. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. We're gonna go ahead and grant 30 seconds more. I, just, I wanted to dovetail on that with, about Joe, because that has been a, an issue, in, particularly in Candler. And there's two FEMA properties that were bought by the county that were owned, and we've gone and tried to get a park there. We can't get them to move forward with that. I just wanted to put that out because it's a budget issue and I understand that so we're trying to partner with people in the area and other groups and organizations to make that kind of thing happen but if we can't get a park in, in an area that only has one park I just wanted to kind of add that and that caveat. All right we're going to go to Mr. Belcher 30 seconds more and then we've got. Okay uh, also there there are businesses that will look there are developers that will come here and that when they come here, they will have land that they cannot do anything with. It will be located near, near a creek. It will be, be some uh, land that is just not suitable for, to put their, uh, whether it be retail or, or manufacturing, it won't be suitable for that. So we can work with those businesses. And I have the experience to be able to do that. I've done that all over this country for Clayton. We, we can work with those businesses and let them help do some of this so that we don't have to put it on the taxpayers' land. Ms. Van Dyne, did you want 30 seconds? Mr. King? Okay. All right, next question, and we will start with you, Ms. Van Dyne. How much will environmental concerns influence decisions regarding job creation? Well, I, <clears throat> when I started uh, my campaign, I got a call from Gabe Dunsmith. Gabe is a wonderful young man who uh, suffered from thyroid cancer as a result of growing up on the CTS site. So where, in, if, if we're talking about environmental um, issues in the context of public health, um, I don't think that's a trade-off we can afford to make. We're seeing with the CTS site what it's costing to clean that up, how, how many years it's taken to clean that up, and how many people have gotten sick because of it. So um, that's not a trade-off I'm willing to make. Swift? Well, it's traditional here. We, environment is tourism. That's our business. We've been in the business of tourism a long time. Um, and, and it is important to continue that base, but we also need a diverse economy. You need a diverse portfolio yourselves. We need a diverse economy. Um, I would like to see us explore new ideas. A lot of times things come, come up 
and people want to move forward and, and when when the problems are around environmental issues I would like to see a little bit more partnership working with companies and environmental uh, organizations I think agroforestry is an industry that we need to look at there is a partnership that's business working in the forest there are ideas like that out there I'm willing to work with anyone business uh, environmental groups to make us successful and protect what we uh, what we can but I think you know we, we need to also make room for business as well it, it's going to be a, a partnership Mr. Belcher um, again I'll say I was raised in, in southern West Virginia during the time when our rivers in West Virginia ran black with coal I swam in the rivers and cut off jeans and had to wash my jeans when I got out it took the tops of the mountains off it was called uh, uh, you had high walls that's the way they mined the coal now before you go way out there on that let me tell you when I thought when when I came to these mountains in 32 years ago the deep love that I have with these mountain for mountains that God and my family put in my heart I will not let nobody destroy these mountains now with that said you can't be foolish you know I promise you I know how to build on slopes because our house was looking on the side of the, of the mountain like that there's ways to do things you can be practical you don't have to be um, and you can attract businesses and you don't have to just blanketly restrict every business because they are coming to the mountains the mountains and businesses can coexist together and people like myself that love them and have the experience in business can ensure that that can happen mr king um i spent 20 plus years working in manufacturing and uh purchasing planning and supervision and i can tell you that we're safe we're not going to see any smokestack industry coming to western north carolina we we are not suited for that type of manufacturing here uh, the days of those smokestacks are gone here. So what we're going to have mostly is machining, uh, technological, and small manufacturing companies. And that's what we will be able to attract. Uh, and most of them are going to be a hundred or fewer employees. And I have worked in the days when, when the laws were relaxed on that. And I can tell you, I worked to help get some things in place. Worked with Land of Sky Regional Council. And uh, it's bad business for companies to pollute and do that anyway. Uh, so I would not be concerned. And as a commissioner, I would also be vigilant of that. But I, I just don't think we could even attract those people, even if we wanted to. We're not geographically located but for that today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 30 seconds. I went to a, uh, a meeting at AB Tech recently where they had several uh, farmers come and talk about special programs and other organizations that supported farmers in making them sustainable. And the county sent a representative from the health department and he was pretty straightforward. He said, you know, it's my job to, uh, it's, it's my job to regulate you, to make sure your food is safe. However, I want you to be successful. And I think I think this is about balance. Thank you, Thank you. Would anybody care for additional? Right. We're gonna go ahead and start with you, Ms. Wood. And I'm waiting to see, I believe we've got two more questions before we'll have to call it, but I'm waiting to see what our actual end time is. Uh, and it relates to jobs, and that is what is your uh, feeling on using incentives? or business or attract business um, this is a topic on the trail I'm glad this came up because it is a difference for some um, I am for targeted incentives um, targeted with accountability and the easiest way I've talked to people on the trail is used to you could build, build a house I'm a real estate agent too you could build a house you didn't have to have any kind of of uh, uh, appliances in the house not even carpeting and you would sell 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 so today you better have granite countertops and a flat screen TV and they're going to ask you for the dog at the closing table the fact is we have to have it to compete uh, Greenville has a 15 year head start uh, we've got to run it through programs that are going to have accountability I've got a great uh, um, tenant improvement program that uses very little money and it can help small businesses there's creative ways out there to use incentives but incentives have to also be an incentive for Buncombe County. You have to know that whatever you're going to do is going to create other businesses that aren't incentivized to continue uh, growing 
jobs and, and offering money throughout the county. Thank you. Before we go to Mr. Belcher, we do have more time, so if you do have questions still, we are collecting them. Just hold your hand up if you need a card or hold the card up if you have a question. 